Okay. All right. Uh, good morning. My name is uh, Key, last name Choi. I'm the associate pastor of Faith United Methodist Church here. Uh, we want to welcome you to our first uh, live stream worship service. And <clears throat> one of the things that, that, that we're recognizing today is that we're, we will still have some people coming in. And today we do have two services. Uh, we have an 830 service and a 1030 service this morning. And so if you're not able to make it to our 830, uh, we'll be uh, live streaming again at 1030. Uh, this morning, uh, if we want to go, first thing we want to do is ask you to go ahead and check into our website. Uh, our website will be updated, you know, weekly. Uh, as, we, as we get information, our website will be updated as well. But if you want to go ahead and, and invite others uh, to go ahead and join our live stream, uh, invite them to go to our website, which is www.faithsouthbay.org. That's www.f-a-i-t-h-s-o-u-t-h. B-A-Y dot O-R-G. So on our web website, you'll get all the information that you're probably looking for. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is, one, obvious, because of the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus um, uh, pandemic that we've been uh, facing. And uh, there's a lot of changes that's been happening in the last couple of days. And for the sake of our safety, the safety of our community, uh, the health of our, of our church members, and all of you out there, um, if you are new, uh, we're, we're hoping that this is, this is an opportunity for us to maybe even uh, look into how we may do, uh, we may give opportunities for those who are not able to leave their homes uh, a way to go ahead and worship with us on a weekly basis. Um, like many of the uh, county organizations like schools and, and hospitals and uh, clinics, uh, before you enter their doors, they're going to ask you some questions uh, the three basic ones, as we were asked, as I was picking up my, uh, my child from school this week, even uh, up until Friday, even before we were allowed to pick up our kids, they would ask us three questions. The first one was, uh, have you been out of the country uh, in the last 14 days? And I think even these questions will change, but for now, have you been out of the country or out of town in the last 14 days? And, you, and, if, and then you, they ask you to answer that question. The second one is, uh, do you have a close family member or someone in your household uh, that has left the country or out of, out of town in the last 14 days? Um, and then the next question is, do you have a fever or a cough or a runny nose? And if I were to answer yes to any of those, they would not allow me to come in. In fact, they'd have to walk my child to the gate and then give me my child there so that I can take him or her home. So these are the questions that we're going to ask as well. So if you answer yes to any of these, uh, we do recommend and would appreciate you uh, staying home and checking, checking us, uh, connecting with us through our church website. Now, this is live, so I may say things that, that you might go, oh, why did he say that? It may happen. It probably will happen. Uh, so we do ask uh, for a lot of your grace uh, during this time. We're trying to make this as live and engaging as possible so that uh, our experience of worship here is as real as possible as well. And so... Um, as we continue, we're going to go ahead and begin. And again, I want to re, uh, repeat, we want to invite you to our church website for any live stream. And even if you missed a live stream, there'll be recorded versions of it. Uh, and if you have any questions, please contact the church through email, uh, our phone number, uh, which is area code 310-217-7000. Area code 310-217-7000. Give us a call during the week. Uh, Mondays are closed. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, office hours are the same, but again, we invite you to go ahead and call us or contact us uh, through either email or social media or even a phone call, and that would help us to keep our staff uh, as healthy as possible so that during this time we can be available to help you and to connect with you, okay? So thank you again for worshiping with us. Uh, this morning, if you can, if you go to, your web, if you go to the website, uh, uh, I would say go ahead and click or tap on the home page and on the home page when you do that um, it'll the first thing that'll that'll uh, show up is it'll say coronavirus update 2 and as you go you can go ahead it says faith united methodist church live stream church online go ahead and tap that and then and then it'll take you to it'll take you to our other parts of our worship service and in that if you scroll up where it says click here if you click where it says click here for the order of worship for tomorrow's worship service, that means today's worship service. If you click that, then an order of worship will come up, 
okay? And for the purposes of our bandwidth here, we've asked all of those who are joining, we have about maybe 20 people joining us, and many because they're here either helping us with this live service or going to help us uh, sing, uh, lead us in our, our, our songs. Uh, but at the same time, again, if you click on that, you'll have your order of worship uh, to join us today. And as you can see, I'm doing a lot of explaining. I'm trying to help uh, folks who, don't, who have never uh, joined us for worship. I'm trying to answer the question why as briefly as I can so that you can sort of engage and know why we do the things we do here at church, especially during our worship service. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, invite you. If you're in your homes, you're with your children at this time, uh, go ahead and have them. And, you know, this is great because they could sit in, in their pajamas and they can have their hot chocolate. You can have your hot coffee. This is a great and fun way uh, to go ahead and worship together, except if you're a pastor's kid, of course, then you're here at church with us. Um, but at the same time, we do invite you to just sit tight uh, and enjoy the service at home. This is something that we haven't done yet, and so this will be a little bit fun as well. So let us go ahead and have fun with this. Um, and if you do follow along with us uh, on our order of worship, uh, we go ahead and we do a little word of greeting. So go ahead and, and I would say, uh, say hi to your neighbors, to your right or to your left, especially in your household. Uh, if you want, give them an uh, air high five or maybe even a... a, a a elbow uh, tap, so in, in, our, in our congregation as well, if you want to do that, you can give each other a little air, high five, all right? Thank you very much. All right, and as we do that, we're going to now start by uh, reading the centering words, and the centering words is what we normally read. You can, you can uh, treat this as a prayer, or you can treat this as just a way of saying, uh, we want to hear these words, let these, sink, uh, these words sink into our hearts and our souls so that we can go ahead and prepare our hearts and our minds for this morning's uh, worship service. So here are the centering words. You who are thirsty, come. Here you will find Christ's grace to quench your thirst and God's love to nourish your souls. Amen. I'm going to invite our Crossroads team up. They're going to take a little moment to prepare. And as they do, um, they're gonna, we're going to go ahead and sing. And if, and if you want to, you can... This is where you can use your, your social media, you can use your phones, your internet connections to go ahead and look up the words, all creatures of our God and King. If not, we'll also have it on the screen. Yeah, we'll have it on the screen. Oh, sorry, yes. It's going to be the spirit song. My, 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 my apologies. On your, on your order of worship, it says, all creatures of our God and King, but we decided to change it, and it will be spirit song for this morning. Uh, the words will be on the screen, uh, on, your, uh, on your tablet screen. If you're watching on television, uh, you can do that. If you're watching on your computer, uh, just know that it will be the spirit song, and our Crossroads team is now ready to go ahead and lead us in this time. So if you're at home, please join us in singing this together.
Amen. Thank you, Crossroads team. At this time, for those of you that are watching, I'd like to uh, invite you to join our call to worship, which is just a way that we are able to center ourselves before uh, entering into worship. Uh, the words will appear on your screen. Normally, the, the L stands for leader and the P stands for people, but today it just stands for person. So if you could join me. Let's sing to God. Let's sing of love. For love is here. Let's sing and rejoice. For our souls are Let us pray. Ever-present God, even as you are present with us this day, we yearn to feel your presence in our midst each and every day of our lives. Speak to us with words of grace. Reveal yourself with the power of your love. Flow over us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Help us know the glory of your love and experience the wonder of your grace. In the name of your love, we pray. Amen. All right, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and invite our children up. And if you're at home, this is a time in which you can go ahead and sit in this. And this portion is really for you. So I want to go ahead and invite uh, our, our, our children who are here today Amara and Kyra. So if you guys want to stand right here, Amara. <laughs> Kyra, right here. I'm going to move this. All right. We have our two little beauties here this morning, okay? And they're going to help me uh, share the children's message. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open our arms wide like this. hands wide like this and our, and our audience here and our members here will do that and at home go ahead and open your arms wide and we're going to remind ourselves of the three great big truths okay ready and you're going to repeat after me God is a great big God you say go ahead God. say God is a great big God God loves us with a great big love And we're all part of God's great big world. All right. Okay. So why don't you all come on over here so that we can sort of uh, right, stand right there, Kyra. Right there. Good, Amara. Good morning. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're going to uh, uh, do a little children's sermon, okay, uh, coming from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 9. Okay. And this is the children's version of our sermon today. And... And it's a reminder from, our, our, from your mom and our pastor, uh, three things. Be calm, wash your hands, and keep the Sabbath day holy. But let me ask you both a question. Do you know, and I'm sure you know these, this answer, but a lot of folks at home, do you know that, what do you think, do you think pastors only work on Sundays for like an hour or two? No? You know better, huh? Because you live with the pastor. In fact, you live with two pastors, mom and dad, right? Well, a lot of people think that pastors only work on Sundays. I know, right? Can you imagine that God is only going to work through our pastors only on Sundays? What does that mean for Monday through Saturday, correct? What do we do for them? Do we just sit around and watch television all day? I hope not, right? But for that reason, did God call only pastors to live a Christian life? No. In fact, don't you think pastors need help to live the Christian life? Yeah, we need more examples than just pastors. And so in verse 8 of today's Philippians chapter 4, verse one, uh, 4 through 9, in verse 8, they're giving us, and they're, uh, uh, it's a reminder that life is about choices, right? Life's about choices. Do you like the fact that you have a choice, or do you like it better when mom and dad says, you're just going to do this? you rather have choices or no choices? Yeah. Of course, we all rather have choices, right? Who wants to have, who, who doesn't want to have choices? So therefore, even in life, we make choices to live the way Christ wants us to live, right? And so the things that we want to do is, for example, according to today's passage, where it says the Apostle Paul tells us to live with, with truth. That's right. Live with love. Live with honor live with a sense of just in our hearts, live purely, live pleasingly to Christ and God, 
live commendable lives, and live lives that are excellent and worthy of praise, right? And so these are the choices that we can make to go ahead and make, uh, live good lives. But did you all take home a prayer chain before the season of Lent started? Do you remember the prayer chain that kind of looks like this? Oop. Right, that looks like this, and they were in a chain, and we took them off, and every day, right? So for those of you at home, if you, don't, if you didn't uh, have your prayer chain, this is a list. So tomorrow, we're going to choose to do these things to go ahead and make sure that we live healthier lives that helps us to get closer to God as well. Monday, no sweets or candies. Is that hard to do? Probably, okay? But we can choose to not eat sweets or candies only tomorrow, Monday, okay? On Tuesday on the prayer chain, it'll say, write a card for your parents or grandparents, letting them know that you love them. That's kind of cool. You can choose to do that. On Wednesday, it says, choose to be nice to someone you don't usually get along with. It could be your sibling. It could be a friend at school, although you're not meeting at school. Whoever it is, think of a way that you can be or to extra nice to them this week, okay, especially on Wednesday. Or on Thursday... The part of the prayer chain is you can choose to listen to one Christian song and draw a picture about what you think God might want you to do, okay? And then on Friday, say three nice things to a family member on Friday. Three nice things to a family member. And then on Saturday, pray for, pray for those who work at the hospitals like our doctors and our nurses, our, our, our school nurses, uh, they get a break, but at the same time, they, they may not fully get a break because if you're a nurse, someone's always calling you, and they're going to be doing that for the next few weeks. And so let's pray for them that they continue to stay healthy so that they can help other health people to get healthy as well. Is that a good idea? We can choose to be Christian, right? Big smile, ladies. All right. Should we pray? All right, let's pray. We're going to go ahead and pray at home as well, so if you can put your hands together or close our eyes. And we can bow our heads, or you can, even, uh, you can go ahead and just watch the screen. But go ahead and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, help all of us to stay healthy so that we can help others stay healthy. For those who are going through sickness, please give them your hand of healing. We ask for your blessing to be selfless, to think of others, to help others stay close to you during this difficult time. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. Thank you, Kyra and Amara. Okay, at this time, we're going to go ahead and invite the pastors up for a time of announcements. Good morning. This is Reverend Allison, um, and we are glad to have those who are here worshiping with us and all of you online who are worshiping with us as well. Um, just a couple of announcements. I'll give you the general ones, and Pastor Kia and Minister Eric will give you a little more specifics. But if you can all go to our website, faithsouthbay.org on a regular basis. If you need to know what's going on at Faith for updates, we're trying to update daily. So if you have any questions, you can go to the website. And then if you have other questions during the church office hours, we're remaining open during that time. So we want you to just call the office and let us know if you have any questions or any needs. Um, we were, will be open Tuesday to Friday. Our office hours are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There are specific questions that we will ask you if you do come to the church to drop things off. And as Pastor Keith mentioned earlier, we're going to be asking you if you do have a cough or a fever or if you have traveled out of the country or have friends or relatives that have traveled out of the country. So we will ask you those questions. And if you say yes, we'll ask you to go home and call us. But otherwise, um, we hope that we can fill needs for you and answer questions if you have any. And so I'm going to turn this back over to Minister Eric for other specific announcements and then Pastor Key as well. Uh, so due to just the ongoing events as things unfold, uh, a lot of our regularly scheduled events are being postponed. Um, so 
Our first event that is being postponed is Japanese Movie Night, which normally happens on the third Sunday of the month, but that'll be postponed. Our pre Okaidi ev panel event, which is which was scheduled for Saturday, March 21st. Our hub workshop, which was a West District training um, that was happening on Thursday, March 25th, that is also postponed. Our Eagle Court of Honor. Um, our Corazon house build is being postponed from Saturday, March 28th until September. Our Matsuri of Faith, unfortunately, uh, we voted as a administrative council and will be canceling our Matsuri of Faith this year. Uh, Pastor Key, can you give us some of the regular um, ongoing events that are being canceled as, or postponed as well? Yeah, and this is a good time for us to make these announcements because there's a lot of stuff that were scheduled for this particular week. For example, for those of you who enjoyed Senior Hangout, uh, this week we're supposed to meet tomorrow Monday, but that will be also suspended until further notice. This is the list of ministries and group gatherings uh, that are happening in this week and the next couple weeks that we are asking uh, you to be patient with us, recognizing what's happening. And so these are the things that we're going to have to uh, postpone and suspend until further notice. Uh, simply for the fact that we want to keep as many people as healthy as possible. So starting tomorrow, Senior Hangout has been suspended. Uh, Tuesday's Logos will be suspended. Uh, Wednesday, Wish is also suspended. Uh, Wednesday night, the Midweek Lent Study is also suspended. Uh, ping Pong Nights that usually happen on Mondays and Wednesday evenings are also suspended. Nichigo Bible Study and Manga Studies are also suspended. Uh, we have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who meet at our church uh, those, uh, those meetings are also suspended. Uh, youth and young adult ministries are also suspended. Uh, all music lessons, uh, uh, we would like you to take this time to go ahead and practice a lot at home. Uh, but those are also suspended, and I know uh, uh, Uncle Rick would love us to, to, to go ahead and announce that. Uh, but this is a great time for you to go ahead and practice so that by the time we do come back, you can go ahead and impress uh, uh, Uncle Rick and, and, and Mr. Steven with your um, incredible prowess. <clears throat> But at the same time, there, these are just a few of the things that are suspended now. And if you have any questions that we have not mentioned, please contact us again so that we can help you go ahead and answer some of those questions. The event that will be happening tomorrow is we will commence with the memorial service for Masako Surutome, who had turned 101 just three days before she passed away. So the service will be tomorrow here at 1 p.m. We will be practicing the proper precautions, and the family um, understands that, and they would like for the service to continue. And her committal service will be at Green Hills Memorial Park on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Also pending, if you are curious about our Japanese mission trips, we are having a meeting this week with the Japanese mission teams, but it looks as though they will be combining trips for the Japan, hoping that the September trip will be available and open to all of us travelers. Um, there are many other announcements that you can get details on. And so if you'd like, if you'd like a good news, which is our monthly newsletter, please let us know and we can send you one via email or mail. And our April edition is coming out shortly. And as a final notice, again, the reason why we're doing all of this is because um, I know some of us who are um, younger and, 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 and younger, th younger than the um, retired age folks who are 65 and over. They say 60, but here 60 feels like 30 at our church because we have so many older folks here who are actually very strong and healthy, but we want to keep you that way. Uh, so for some of us who are young adults and, and, and children, you know, once we get, if we were to get caught with the virus, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for that generation to go ahead and get healthy. We're more concerned about the elderly and, and as much as possible, we think as we gather as young people, it's okay if we gather because, you know, if we were to get it, we'll be fine. We're young, we can do this, but that's not the point. The reason why we're doing this and trying to decrease our meetings in person here is so that we don't add to the amount of carriers that are out there. And the less we can go ahead and, and I mean, the more we can decrease uh, the amount of carriers of this virus, uh, the sooner I think as a whole we can go ahead and get out of this pandemic situation. And so we again want to encourage all of you. I know it's important to get out and meet people and that we're not trying to do that. I know some people might feel a little bit more isolated. We don't want you to do that. Try to get out and do some walking and things like that. But at the same time, if you can, we're trying to uh, encourage people to decrease the amount of carriers for this so that we can get out of this uh, situation sooner than later. So thank you for that.
At this time, I'd like to direct your attention to our scripture lesson for today. Um, you can follow along on the screen, and the scripture lesson is from Philippians 4, 4 through 9, and it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So during the season of Lent, we have a sermon series that's going on, sort of inspired by uh, the writer and, and CEO, of, uh, uh, CEO of his company, uh, Donald Miller. And we took some of his five principles and decided we wanted to use those for our sermon series during the season of Lent. Uh, and, and we're not doing it exactly the way he does it, but we do like the principles and we decided to use that for this season. And so we have a five-part sermon series, which today, actually this particular Sunday on uh, March 15th, we're going to take a break because we're going to have a guest speaker today. But because of the coronavirus, uh, we had to change some of our scheduling. And so we're going to go ahead and continue to, to skip this week. But I wanted to go ahead, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, to just sort of give you an idea of what we were doing with our sermon series. And so it was a five-part sermon series, and we started on the first Sunday of Lent, and it was called God Designed Us for Change. Uh, and, and that was really just something about allowing God to change you so that gratitude can become a habit in us. So we can actually practice gratitude in different ways so that uh, gratitude becomes a habit. And when we do have gratitude, we actually end up living healthier lives, especially for those of you who know people who live with gratitude. And then the following Saturday, a Sunday, last Sunday, Reverend Allison took part two, which was you have a relationship with yourself, so might as well make it a healthy one. And that is a way for us to remind ourselves that God created each and every one of us to be good. And so part of that good is to respect and love for that, to have respect and love for thyself so that um, we can go ahead and recognize what it means to be healthy and feel healthy so we can go ahead and offer that to others as well. So a lot of that love and, and self-respect comes from a relationship with Jesus and with God so that we can go ahead and encourage others to do the same as well. And then, not today, but next, sorry, next Sunday we'll, we'll continue and it'll be part three. And Minister Eric will go ahead and uh, touch on the topic. You will become like the people you hang out with. In other words, uh, what we're saying is your relationships, the relationship that you have around you may determine the quality of your life. Think about the people you have around you now, your family members, your spouses, your in-laws, your friends, your coworkers, all of them. They determine what kind of quality of life you may have. And so you may want to pray, about, uh, pray to God about how to make those situations or relationships healthier. And then the fourth part is it's okay to quit sometimes. In other words, that doesn't mean you should quit everything in your life. That's not what we're saying. But we recognize that out of John 15, uh, pruning for a healthier spiritual life is something that we all need to participate in. And then Reverend Allison is going to go ahead and close us in our sermon series of part five. And, and she's going to remind us that uh, in this year, in one year, we can only do three big things to make it, to make it effective. And so she's going to share with us how to go ahead and think about those three things because it's just three that we want to really focus on so that we can be effective and efficient this year. Okay. So this morning, we are going to do a, a dual dialogue sermon and kind of just invite our online congregants and even those who that are here today to participate with us. But if you're online, you are invited to send in comments and prayers um, as they come in, and we will have, we have our two uh, scribes in the back who are just transcribing all of your prayers for us back there. They better be. But um, Pastor Key, good morning. Good morning, Reverend Allison. Um, how are you today? Yes, we'll do our little we're, we're air high fives. Air high fives, um, <laughs> bows, shakas, whatever That's you right. need to do. Shakas to, are to good. That's good. That's right? a good one. Yeah. It's like, what's up? <laughs> but um, we also, we wanted to kind of just gather you all in a place where we are reminded that we're two or three are gathered. We are gathered in Christ's name. And if you are gathered in your homes, if you're gathered online with us, if you're starting watch parties on Facebook, um, this is a place where we can be still in worship together. 
And so as we do this, I was reminded that the scripture that we chose for today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. And it starts out with rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I will say rejoice. And for some of us, this doesn't necessarily feel like a rejoicing time. Right. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, yeah. It feels like a time of anxiety and a time of uh, worry. Um, many of you have tried to go shopping, I'm sure. Uh, any of you out there go shopping? How long did you stand in line? A long time. A long time, yeah. <laughs> I think I saw half of Faith United Methodist Church at Tokyo Central yeah. the other day. And um, we, it's, it's just it's scary. And a lot of us who are able are able to shop. And we know a lot of people are unable to do so. We know that we have a lot of our grandparents, our seniors in our co congregation and our community that are homebound. Mm -hmm. And so uh, finding ways that we can connect, this is the time to do so. And there is one of the uh, articles that keeps coming up on my Facebook feed, and I think it's beautiful, is in Italy, we know that just this week, within a 24-hour period, they lost over 200 people to coronavirus. I mean, that, that was the cause of death. And so the people in Italy are quarantined, self-quarantined, or mandated quarantine, actually. Mm -hmm. And what's happening, though, is that they're lifting each other's spirits by singing to each other or having balcony concerts. And you can hear the echoes of the songs coming across mm -hmm. from each balcony. That's I saw great. a picture of a boy playing his, I think, trumpet from his balcony. Mm. And it's, it's about a time of us coming together, but also trying to figure out how do we be community for each other, even in and under social isolation. Right and social distancing. We're not even the right distance apart. I know, we're not six feet apart here. <laughs> no. But I, I, I just wanted to, to have this conversation with Pastor Key about the next part of this text, though, is about not worrying. It says, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, made known to God. So yes, we can pray, we can do these things. Pastor Key, though, people are freaking out. They are. You know, we're, we're the church called Faith UMC, and there's more than one Faith UMC. Uh, we're the one that's called Faith UMC of Torrance. And for a lot of the folks who are in the South Bay area around us, we're the church that's next to Nijia Market. And because of that, we, sh uh, we, we have a large parking space, and, and we, share, we share that uh, partnership with, with the uh, uh, folks next door. And we recognize uh, being here at church this week, uh, at times, we would see the the parking lot just filled, and people are, 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 are then now leaving their carts, and so right now, they're not calm, and I think uh, when we're not calm, we're thinking selfishly. When we're not calm, we're not thinking of our neighbors. Uh, there's a part of me that wishes some of our um, uh, merchants, or not merchants, but our, our businesses here would actually limit how much uh, things that they can buy per, per customer so that others can have a chance. Otherwise, uh, this becomes worse and worse. We recognize there's certain places that might actually hike up the prices on some of their, some of their products because they can, because uh, people are in such desperate need of, of wanting uh, such things as toilet paper, you know, or, or, or more water. And for those of you who have filters in your, in your, system, in your, uh, in your households, uh, you're actually in a, in a good place. But at the same time, because of panic, uh, we're asking you to calm, be calm, think clearly, uh, so that you're not only thinking of yourself and your family only, but you're also thinking of our neighbors. And it's one of those things where, like, either we can create a destructive cycle or we can, or we can create a constructive cycle. And we want to go ahead and continue to create a constructive cycle where uh, when you help somebody else, they're going to want to help you too. And I think one way or another, the things that we do, our behaviors, can be contagious. And so I hope that we're creating a, a, a healthy, contagious uh, movement here so that we can think of our neighbors rather than just ourselves. Well, and then there are ways that we can be supportive of our neighbors, of our elders in our neighborhood, and literal neighbors next door. Check on your neighbors, check on your parents right. and grandparents. But also, um, how do you share? Like, I'm, I'm hoping, when I see these pictures of people buying 20 packets of toilet paper or carts full of water or extra bags of rice, I mean, I'm telling you, in this neighborhood, no rice, no spam. That's, that's what's happening here. <laughs> but if you have those, are you sharing them with others, or are you holding them for another time? I mean, this is a little crass, but my favorite post during this time was, 
this is the coronavirus epidemic, not a diarrhea epidemic. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about, right. it, it's the wrong kind of hoarding, if, right. if that's what it is. But it's about sharing and connecting with our neighbors, too, if, if we can do that. And I think that takes a different heart and a, and a different way to do that and, and a different spirit. Yesterday, a group of women, just impromptu, came to church, and I actually watched the text feed, and it was amazing. They were like, everything is out at the store. What do you have? And it was like stone soup. Mm. Everybody was saying, well, I've got a chicken, and I've got carrots, and I've got vegetables. These are things that um, we might not have already. And so they made pots of soup to distribute to those who might need some comfort food during this time. So if you're out there and you would like a, a cup or bowl of homemade soup, um, let us know. And you can actually come by the church. You can't come in, but you can come by the church, and we'll hand you some soup out between our services today. But also we can deliver them to you. Mm -hmm. Or if you know somebody that needs a uh, cheering up of comfort food, a delivery, we'd be happy to do that. So we want to thank those ladies that did that. But they actually spurred other people to send messages to the church saying, right. how can we help too? Right. And so we know that this epidemic, we know the school has been canceled for two weeks for now, that we're closing the church for two weeks for now. But this is not going to be over mm -hmm. for a long while. And so we're going to need to find ways that we can continue to be church mm -hmm. in different ways. And so other people were saying, what can we do? And so we said, well, what if we have weekly teams come in? Mm -hmm. And small groups, of course, but making food with what we have and sharing that with those who need it. Yeah. And then the youth have been thinking, how can we support our seniors and those who cannot shop? And so talking about ways that, and we haven't gotten there yet, but figuring out, like, do we make care packets? with essential needs that our church members might need and that they're ready to go when people need them. I mean, it could be even be as simple as toilet paper, right? right. I need a roll of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Can you spare a square, mm -hmm. right? right. And, and also for our children, we are recognizing that these kids are out of school, the youth are out of school, college kids are out of school. We can't gather them all here at the church because that defeats the purpose. Right. But we can connect you to adults who are willing to help maybe for a couple hours a day so that you can get your work done or household chores done. Um, we're very grateful for this community for already stepping up to do a lot of those things. Yeah, and we'd say part of the keeping calm is to check in with your family members. Um, as, as Reverend Allison mentioned, uh, the, the stores, they're all so filled with so many people right now, and that's the last place you kind of want to be, but because we're so desperate, we end up being there and crowding that space and so there's no way we can go ahead and, and, and live with the six feet apart, you know, situation that we're hoping for. But at the same time, we, need, we do need to check in. We recognize that, um, or I was able to recognize that at least even this past couple of days, uh, that when the kids were let out of school and we got the uh, notice that school was going to be suspended for the next two weeks, um, you would think that, that in, in these situations we would do our best to go ahead and, and, and eat less or do less. But for some reason, you know, our children are eating probably way more now. And I'm wondering how they're being affected psychologically in this without even, you know, saying maybe it's important during these times to check in with our kids, to check in with our family members, to check in with our, with our parents to see how they're doing. And, and really ask that question because in some ways this is a great time for us to go ahead and take a break from eating a lot, for example, or take a break from, from doing the usual uh, um, you know, excessive you know, things that we know would normally do. This is a time to actually conserve uh, so that we can be helpful in that way. And I think like, like, like Reverend Allen says, once we help a neighbor, they're gonna wanna help others as well. And we wanna continue to be contagious in that way. Right? Totally, well and actually Pastor Key, you brought up how are we having conversations with each other, our mm -hmm. families, but also this is a season. This is a season of Lent, right? right. And, and if we're talking about our theme being <laughs> spiritual cleanse, this is literally a time to cleanse everything, right. literally uh, sterilize things and literally clean things, but also cleanse our hearts and, and ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking about this, and I wanted to ask you what you, you're doing personally with you and your family, but on Wednesday when we decided that the church is going to make a decision to cancel or postpone or reschedule um, events that are happening here, um, we, we just, I started noticing my calendar clearing up mm -hmm. for things. And I said, oh, if I don't have this meeting on Sunday, I can take my kids to a birthday party, which is canceled, by the way, because <laughs> it's at Chuck E. Cheese. But and I'm very glad for that. But I think that there are uh, the freeing of this calendar actually lifted 
things from me. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's, it's feeling indifferent. This Lent is feeling different. I'm taking seriously, I'm taking literally, and I'm taking right. more spiritually this understanding of what Lent means to wander in the desert. Mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people, the social isolation of wandering by yourself mm -hmm. is real right now. But how are we praying and being prayerful with ourselves and our families? How are we fasting? How are we continuing to almsgive or to serve others? And so I was curious what you're doing with you and your family. Well, it's kind of interesting because, you know, when we came up with the sermon top, the sermon series, Spiritual Cleanse, we had no idea that uh, we were actually cleaning other aspects of our lives. And, and since, this, uh, uh, since the news had come out, and especially after the uh, uh, news about it being a national emergency. Uh, I think that's where a lot of the panic started happening even more. But within our families, uh, like Reverend Allison said, it's been so interesting that, you know, my wife and I kept on saying, it's so nice to have the family together more often than the usual, right? I mean, we're eating breakfast together, we're having lunch together, and we're having dinners together. Um, I'm having a lot more time just, just hanging out with my son, you know, and, and playing basketball with him. Uh, this is a time to pull out our, our, our board games as well, you know, as much as we can when we are at home. And so this really gives us an opportunity to go ahead and take a Sabbath from our usual. It's really interesting that all the things that we had, and for those of us who live in the South Bay and we have kids who play, play sports, we know how busy our lives can get right away. And to think yesterday, we were saying, is today Saturday? It didn't feel like a Saturday because there was no basketball games, no baseball games, no dance competitions. None of that stuff were happening yesterday. We were at home. We took walks. We were, we were you know, figuring out you know, just how, how to make just more fun. And it was just a, a lot more conversations. Uh, it's one of those things where you know, we asked the kids to put their phones down. And all of a sudden, who knew? My son was talkative. So you know, <laughs> he started talking more and more. And so it's interesting how when we give them the space that they do have a lot to say, that they do have a lot on their hearts. And so it's really given us a lot more family conversations and dialogues through this time. And I actually noticed my son saying, Dad, come and join me. And I go, whoa, when was the last time I got that word, you know? So uh, this has been really interesting and, and fun, but also healthy, you know, in, in a very spiritual and, and, and relational way. So, yeah. I'm glad that you shared that because I think it is about reprioritizing and prioritizing. I mean, the, the three parts to our sermons today, that the title was Be Calm, Wash Your Hands, mm -hmm. but to keep the Sabbath holy. Yes. You know, to, to take a Sabbath day. And last night, I normally put Mamara to sleep, and then I end up falling asleep with her, but Amara fell asleep at early, and Kyra goes, Mama, read to me. And I'm like, Totally, I'll read to you. I never get to put you to sleep. And Andy normally does the reading. And she picked, she's so weird and fun, just like me. I think I'm weird and just weird. But <laughs> I, I, she picked, she said, I want you to tell me a Bible story. And I was like, really? Cool. I go, go get your Bible. So she got her beginner's Bible, and she's just learning how to read, so it's pretty exciting. Mm. And so she took it out, and, and I said, what story do you want me to tell you? And she's like, let's start from the beginning. And I go, oh, okay, Adam and Eve, right? <laughs> So in the beginning, though, and we started talking about each of the days of the beginning, and she started getting really interested in, like, oh, so God created the sun and the moon and the, the sea creature. She knew the story, of course. But on the last day, I said, what did God do? And she goes, he went to sleep. Mm. God rested. Mm -hmm. God took a Sabbath. For all of those who are hardworking and who are trying to get things done, actually even pastors right now who are scrambling to figure out how to do online worship and their crew out here who help scramble with them. I know Chad has been here since yesterday, 9 a.m., barely took a break. Right. And you, Julie Chad. has been here, our music Thank team, you, all of you who have been here today, those who care about this church community, our greeters and our ushers. After this, go home and take a nap. <laughs> There's not anything you can do. You can't go shopping. The shelves are empty. Right. You, can't, you just be with each other. Take a Sabbath. That's what our Jewish friends do, actually, on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Orthodox Jews don't even turn the light switch on. Right. And they cook their meals the day before Shabbat because it's an opportunity for them to just be family. One time I visited some friends that were Jewish on a Shabbat day, and Jonathan goes, don't worry. Rabbi Jonathan said, don't worry, all of us are in our pajamas right now. <laughs> right. And, he, and they were just playing their instruments because that's no technology. Mm -hmm. Lights were off. And it was, it was quite beautiful just to visit with them during their 
honoring Shabbat and their ritual of Sabbath. Yeah. And that's what you can do. This is an opportunity for us to take Sabbath and to reassess and to reevaluate what's important in our lives Mm -hmm. and hoping that God is at that center, that Christ is at that center. Yeah, I think I think one of the questions or one of the statements that I get a lot is, uh, you know, Pastor Key, I wish I had one more extra hour in the day. Well, we do now. And I think the question is, are you taking advantage of that extra hour? Mm -hmm. Um, Even after today's uh, service, we do have online a a guideline to have a family activity time. And it's online. You can go ahead to our uh, home webpage and you can click click it and you'll get a little PDF of what you can do as a family. And one of the first things that that we're, we're asking folks to do as a family, as they do a little Bible study or a little activity together, is just take a moment, one minute, and just be silent together. When was the last time you were silent together as a group, as a friend, as a family, together but being silent? Not when you're sleeping, but just taking a moment just to be silent and to see what, to maybe even hear what God is trying to share with us in our hearts. And sometimes when you're silent, you hear the most noise. And it's interesting, yeah. And so we do have now a little extra time. In some ways, God has given us that. And the the question is, what are we doing with that? Pastor Key and I can talk forever because we do. Um, We love to talk and we love talking to each other, oftentimes over food. Um, We said we should do a a podcast, but then we'd just be eating and talking about food the whole time. But one of the things that we we want to remind you of is just as we close up this part of our sermon time is that we remind you to be in community and communion with each other and with God, but also to center yourselves. If you are not healthy, if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. Mm -hmm. And so as we are reminded of that, we'll be finding ways. We actually will have our online Bible study. Brian Fujimori has been amazing Amazing. about updating the website almost every time we send him an update, and that's like almost every hour. So thank you, Brian. But also, he's updated the website with our Bible study for the week, our Lenten study. So you can find the past three-week studies on there. And so this week, you'll have your Be Calm, Wash Your Hands, and Keep Sabbath Holy study. Um, Use that with your families Mm -hmm. or with a group of friends. You could do it online like this or, you know, just in in a way it could be with your walking group and you just walk six feet apart and and, and answer the questions. But part of it is also just reminding us to stay connected, Mm -hmm. reminding us to, Pastor Key talked in his sermon three weeks ago, um, he offered a challenge of possibly starting a reciprocity circle, Mm. a way that we can ask each other, I have a need, and somebody else might say, I can help. And if you have a need and you need help, ask us. If you have a gift or a talent or time or extra toilet paper, help and let us know. And, and we're, we'll be doing that as a connection. We'll continue this reciprocity circle within our church and finding ways to help other people, um, but also to help you. And to help you, some things that are coming up that you'll see probably online will be um, Alan Sarvatari is going to create some uh, faithful healing videos um, just to kind of just get us moving. Um, a lot of our seniors might appreciate this time because they take part in his he- faithful healing group, but he'll be doing some Qigong exercises. Mm-hmm. So you can t- tune in for that. Um, we also have some updates for our community, like yeah. things like the census that's Correct. coming up. Census and so Pastor Key can tell us what Amanda, we're going to ask Amanda to do. Yeah, we have a, we have a member, Amanda Takeda, who's uh, one of our day camp directors for this year. And uh, she's also uh, working at a nonprofit uh, which is connected to helping the census 2020 and she has some information that might be really important for all of us to hear um, there's a deadline for the census to be filled out to be completed you can do it online you can do it on on, on, for, on a form and send it back but if you do it on if you don't do it on time then you might have people actually coming knocking on your doors and that's the last thing you want because with all the fraud that's going on these days you never know so it's probably better to get some of this information one of the things that she did remind us is that if anyone is asking for your social security card and they say they're from the, uh, uh, so, um, the Census 2020 uh, you know, group, they'll never ask you for your social security number. So remember that. Never, never, ever give away your social security number and things like that. Uh, for those of you who are watching at home, all of our prime timers and seniors, remember that. 
no one should be asking for your uh, social security card number at all. And so if you ever get that, please let uh, your, your son, your daughter, anyone you know that would know more about this, contact them right away and let them know what's happening. Uh, the most important thing right now is just to, just to stay connected and to stay current with Amen. what we need to know. Exactly. And the last thing, just a, a, a message of hope for all of you out there, that there are still lights in the darkness. Amen that there is hope. And just to celebrate this, before we go into a time of pastoral prayer with Minister Eric, that there are babies being born in this world oh, during this crazy time. And we, we want to send bless, blessings, baby blessings and congratulations to John Visitation and his wife Mika as they had a new baby. Second son. Second son, Aki Drake. Mm -hmm. uh, friends of ours, we're shouting out to Randy and Megan who just had Jake Lane yesterday. Right. And one of my aunties from church, church aunties, has her first granddaughter, Avea, born mm. as well. So there is light in the darkness. There is hope. Right. There is a time for us to be community for each other and to connect with each other. This is the time. Let's prioritize that. Amen. Amen. All right, Eric, you're up. So given this opportunity uh, to join with our faith community as well as our kind of extended online Facebook, Vimeo community, whatever that might be, uh, we do have a number of opportunities for us to join our hearts across maybe, I guess, a, a larger geographical uh, area. And so at this time, as we enter into, into a time of pastoral prayer, um, Please uh, just think about the things that are on your heart. Please think about the things that are on your mind, those people, those circumstances, um, those that might be affected a little bit more by what is going on in this world. And as we go together in prayer, let us pray. A gracious and loving God, as we come before you, we lift up all of those that are within our a community, God, as things are, as we step into the unknown, Lord, we pray that as we are in this time and in this moment in history, God, that we are um, able to not be in a place where we're panicking, God, and just thinking only of ourselves and our immediate family, God, but also just thinking about our larger community, those that uh, may need more help, God, those that are um, older who may be more affected and aren't able to go to the grocery store, who aren't able to um, access the, the resources that they once had, God. We pray as as a world community that as we go through this time that we are given uh, tools for navigation, uh, wisdom to step into the unknown, courage to address those things that uh, we may never have had to address, address before, God. We pray for those that are affected as the cases continue to grow um, with this coronavirus, Lord God. We pray for um, all of the medical staff, doctors and nurses and those that are in hospitals, God, that have to be on the front lines of this, Lord, um, that there is grace and there is love and there is peace in all those hospital rooms, Lord God. We also pray for our local leadership, God, our, those people that are making tough decisions to cancel and close things, God. We pray for our leadership here at Faith as we navigate these times, Lord God, knowing that many people in our community are older and that there are many decisions that need to be made in reflection of that age, Lord God. But at this time, as we um, pray to you, Lord, that we are asking for your provision, for your, your peace, God, the peace that transcends all understanding that guards our hearts and our minds in your Son. And at this time, as we uh, join together in lifting up the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'll invite Reverend Allison to come up to give us instructions for some giving opportunities that we have. So this morning, as we are worshiping online, we actually had some folks that knew that we were having online worship, but drove by church and said, I needed to drop off my offering. And 
How wonderful is that, that people are continuing to think about the mission and ministries of the church because they know that it does not stop. That, that we are continuing to do the work that we feel God calls us to do here at Faith. And those missions and ministries mean updating you and, and keeping you in touch with what's going on in the world, but also planning for the future of Faith United Methodist Church. So if you are called and feel willing to give, you can always pledge and give online. Um, you can turn in envelopes to the church if you would like. You can do that. But a lot of us are already giving online. And so I, for one, am, am one of those. And so you can support this ministry electronically. You can go to our website at faithsouthbay.org and find the giving link. And we have uh, different uh, ways to give. You can go pay through Venmo or PayPal or also our, dis our giving link that links to our bank accounts. So if you would like to do so, we are continuing to take an offering because we know that you know that it's important for the life of this church to continue. And so we ask you to continue to give cheerfully and give lovingly to support the missions and ministries of faith. The ushers can come forward and take an offering of the 20 of us here if they'd like. <laughs> Please join me in this prayer. Living God, through these gifts we now bring, help our world live. Loving God, through these gifts we now bring, help our world love. Nourish others as you have nourished us with your steadfast presence and your healing grace. Amen. I'm going to invite the Crossroads team to come on up. And they're going to go ahead and lead us in our closing song and hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Amen. Thank you, Crossroads and Band, for all of you coming out. Thank you to our ushers and our AV crew, to our pastors and those that have worshiped with us today. Before we close with a benediction, we just want to remind you that we have another broadcast today at 10.30 a.m., so we hope that you'll join us if you need a second dose of Faith United Methodist Church. But we also want to remind you that next week and March 29th, we will be going to one service only for the next two weeks, and that will be at our 10.30 a.m. service time. So if you are wanting to sleep in and normally come to 8.30, sleep in. Take that Sabbath and then come join us for worship at 10.30 a.m. next week. But be mindful that we are sending updates throughout the week through email, but also through our website. So keep us keep up to date and keep us up to date with what's going on with you. And so as we invite you to go forth today, remember that God is with you in all these things. So as you are invited to stay calm, you are invited to wash your hands as well. But also remember that God gives us Sabbath so that we can prioritize our lives so that you, God, can be at the center of it all. In all these things we pray, amen. 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 Pass a piece with fist bumps and hair, and hair high fives if you like.